is our final Super Tuesday of the year on ESPN, and we tip it off with a doubleheader that begins in the SEC. It's the Gamecocks against the Volunteers. And hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler with Larry Conley. You know, Larry, a month ago, we're talking about a Tennessee team that's fifth in the nation. In fact, they got as high as number four. Now they're just trying to survive. They did win over the weekend, but they've lost five of the last six. Brad, they've had a very difficult time. Jerry Green is not sure which club is going to show up each time they go out to play. Take a look at the numbers in that five-game losing streak. It'll give you an idea of how difficult it's been. It hasn't been their offense that's been the problem. It's been their defense and shutting down other teams. This is a very high-potent offense. You know, and it's also a club, to borrow from a song, if you will, they've got the choice to either sit it out or dance, and Jerry Green's hoping they're going to dance. Well, that's for sure. Everybody thinks they're going to be in the dance, but remember, they're 6-8 and eight in the conference play right now, and they play a South Carolina team that has proven to be pretty dangerous. Georgia found that out over the weekend. Yeah, but they've also lost two of their last three games, and the reason they have is because they haven't been able to hold on to leads. They lost Ole Miss, and they lost Arkansas with double-digit leads in the second half. We saw them last Tuesday night with a 10-point lead with three and a half to go. They let it slip away. They don't want to let this one slip away tonight at home as they meet the volunteers when we come back. Frank McGuire Arena on Super Tuesday, number 23, Tennessee, against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Jerry Green's club 19 and 9 on the season. As I said, those 6 and 8 in SEC plays in his fourth year as the head man of the Volunteers. And without a doubt, he's had some questions running through his mind the last few weeks as we take a look at the FedEx starting lineups. Harrison Higgins in the backcourt, Slay and Victor up front, and Vincent Yabro is their leading scorer and rebounder, averaging 16 points per game in Southeastern Conference play. And for Eddie Fogler. And South Carolina in his eighth year, coming in 14 and 11. They likewise are six and eight in conference play. And Eddie's starting lineup altered just a little bit due to senior night. Not much though. Lucas and Bradley in the backcourt. Kitchings, Grant, and Ross. Ross is senior. Normally wouldn't start, but he does play considerably. And Antonio Grant is also a senior. One of the two guys and uh, one of the great players they've had here in the past few years. There's Antonio. David Ross, a 6'5 senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Good three-point shooter. We've had a couple of situations in this basketball game. We've got two backcourt players who had ankle injuries. Tony Harris hurt his against Arkansas. Missed a couple of games, including the Kentucky game. And, of course, South Carolina lost Aaron Lucas in that Georgia game, uh, which they won over in Athens this past weekend. Blew a shoe out. That's the second time in a week we heard that. Brent Wright had it happen at Florida. And there's Aaron. He says he's okay, but he's probably wearing different shoes. We won't go into that. <laughs> See where Juan Dixon changed shoes the other night? Got yep. 23 points in the second half. I'd keep those. <laughs> Montanato's set to toss it. Andre Patillo and Tim Higgins, our other two officials. And on senior night and Super Tuesday, we're underway in Columbia. Tennessee opens up in a man-to-man defense. Something they need to work on. They're the best scoring team in the SEC and the worst at giving up points. Here's Kitchens kicking outside to Bradley. They work it around the perimeter. And back inside they go, and Slay's going to have an early one. You know, you got a guy like Kitchens down inside, a big, strong, physical guy, 6'10, about 260. He's had a pretty decent year this year. It's been a little bit up and down, but pretty good. Well, we saw Rolando Howell come in, the freshman, last week and have the game of his life. And we'll see him early and off in South Carolina later. Here's Kitchens again. They're going right after Slay. A little mismatch there. Yeah, that's not a good match for Slay because Kitchens has got about 10 or 15 pounds on him and about four inches. Yep. Isaiah Victor glides in the paint. Rebound off to Tennessee and a foul as Higgins was trying to come down with the ball. It's going to be on Kitchens. And Tony involved on both ends. If you can't stand the heat, don't go into the kitchen. <laughs> well, this is where it goes, right inside. Nice turn right here into the lane with the left hand off a of slay. Nicely done. Higgins into slay, and he immediately draws a double team, and Ross, the senior, comes up with a steal. So that might have been a walk. No, they got a foul. Donato emphatically calling it. It might be on Slay again. It is on Slay, and he's got two early. And yeah, we might see. See if we can pass away coming in a hurry. Slay right here, number 35. Kitchens is trying to get by. 
Yeah, well, I thought Kitchens uh, was yeah. the one that initiated that contact. That could have gone either way. And Hathaway does check in as Slay picks up two fouls in less than a minute. Nice job by Tony Harris to get over that screen. Boy, they look at Kitchens again. Now he's going to face a bigger man, though, against Hathaway. A little different approach, and Hathaway partially blocked the shot. Good adjustment by Jerry Green that time. Go to the bigger guy inside. Yabrow from 17. Got the roll. Boys, he's been playing well recently. Two double doubles in two of his last three games. How about last week? 20 points. He didn't miss. Seven for seven from the floor, six for six from the free throw line, and ten rebounds, and that went over Vandy over the weekend. That's what you call a perfect game. Or as close to perfect as you'll get. Grant gave up a three, and he's a good three-point shooter. Lucas, nice dish to Kitchings down low. The extra pass to Ross. Hey, maybe one too many passes, but Bradley outside, rimmed out of three. You know what, I think that shot blocking ability of Tennessee may have had an effect on South Carolina. Yeah. When you go over the scouting report, you're told about Tennessee's shot blocking ability, and it is formidable. And they lead the conference in that capacity. Aislip, one of their reserves, has 40 block shots, so that tells you how adept they are. And there's a walk from Victor. That's the second Tennessee turnover. Jerry Green had his team fourth in the country and rolling along. And then the wheels started to wobble, and then they almost fell off the volunteer bandwagon as they lost five straight. But have rebounded now with a win by eight over Vanderbilt over the weekend. And they seem to be starting to put it back together. But look at where they were in mid-January. And now they're fighting to stay in the top 25, and they're number 23 in the ESPN USA Today coaches poll. They have fallen out of the Associated Press poll. As a matter of fact. Good RPI, though, and a tough conference and all the rest, so everybody expects them to make the tournament, but that 6-8 and eight mark in the conference doesn't look too great, actually. Well, I think the problem they're going to have is where they're going to see them. Uh, the committee's got a difficult decision with this club. Pitching's tried the left hand again. This time it's off the mark. Victor with a rebound and ahead to Yarbrough. Hathaway wants it down low. And he didn't get a touch. Pretty good matchup of point guards right there. Lucas against Harris. I think Hathaway just let Yarbrough know, know that he wanted the ball down low and didn't get a touch. Rebound off to South Carolina. The Provisus who just checked in near the board. Carolina only one for four from the field. And a low scoring tie game early, 2-2. Two -two. Travis just had a big weekend. He'll kick outside Antonio Grant. Well, that three was halfway home. And it rattled out. Yarborough with another good rebound. Watch that quick pass. Good pass to Harris. Tony Harris for three. Short. And back come the game cop. Nobody, lot of nobody lot of can find it yeah, right now. Yeah, a lot of execution and no results. Bradley with the left hand. Jamal couldn't. Get it to drop either. And Jerry Green wants a quick timeout right here. So 16.03 to go. Opening half tied at two. Everyone has their opinion about Tennessee's downfall, if you will, and Ron Slay never won to be bashful with a quote said in Sports Illustrated last week. In the first 30 minutes of the game, everybody's basically worrying about himself, and then in the last 10 minutes, everybody's looking at the clock like, damn, we're losing. Well, his coach, Jerry Green, had some comments about his forwards, quote. The, the big thing is we were giving up uh, a lot of points and then trying to overcome that with our offense, uh, and it's uh, rededicating ourselves to the fundamentals of uh, basic defense. Ron probably ran some gassers that next day, too. You never know. But uh, Well, you know, the, the problem right now, and, and I think Jerry Green may have hit on exactly what it was from a coach's standpoint. You talked about in the open defense. Yeah, their defense has been their problem. Yeah. Uh, they, they can score. I mean, that's not been the problem. They've got a great offensive club. Their problem is shutting other people down. I mean, they're, they rank 12th in the Southeastern Conference in giving up points, which is last in this league. Here's Higgins. Drops a three in. 
I tell you what, that's the one guy on this club that has been consistently good all year long. I don't know why he doesn't shoot more, to be honest with you. That's his 46 three-pointer. Every time I do Tennessee, I wonder why he doesn't try to do more offensively. Well, he's shooting 47% from three-point range, which ranks first in, the, in this category in the league. And yet he doesn't take that many shots. He's only averaging 6.6 .6 points a game. Grant packing it right back into Orlando Howell. He's doubled. Travis in the paint and it's stripped by Higgins. Four on the shot clock. Grant better take one. He does. Missed a three. Travis tough offensive rebound. He's got a chance for a three point play. I'm going to tell you what. I don't know which Petrovic is going to show up. He's had some great games. He's had some bad games. He had a terrific game against Georgia this past weekend. Watch him battle underneath against Hathaway right here. I mean, this guy weighs about 280, Hathaway does, but Travis just takes a blow and still is able to get it up. But Travis just didn't do anything in the game we saw last Tuesday night. And he's got a three-point play for South Carolina to tie things up at five here in the early going. Here comes Harris Walker, and he just missed dribbled, and Antonio Grant takes that one the other way. So back-to-back -back turnovers against the Volunteers, five for the game. And let's see if Carolina can capitalize to regain the lead. Lucas for three. Too strong, Hayslip up high for the rebound. Nice block out by Hayslip that time on Petrovic he wouldn't let him near the basket. Another uh, turnover by turn. Tennessee. Three straight. Lucas back to Bradley on a trailer. Petrovic what a pass by Bradley. It's a beautiful thing when it works. Good looking teamwork that time. And it's the game packs by one. Crowd starting to get into it. On the baseline, almost turned over again as Walker was out of control. Higgins says, let's calm down, guys. Walker. Off the glass. Did are he you bang me? That? Are you serious? I don't think he called that one. I mean, the angle he was at, I couldn't believe that ball went off the glass. Antonio Grant drops in his second one in his many trips. Grant, how did he do that? <laughs> that was a gift from above. And I don't mean the top of Frank McGuire Arena. That angle has no business going in. And again, Walker dribbles off his own foot. He's had two turnovers without anybody touching him. 15-14, South Carolina. Tennessee trailing with 8 uh, 7.57 to go in the first half. I want to show you that shot again. This one's called two-ball side pocket. <laughs> again, Walker on the baseline right there. I want you to look at this angle. Now, hold it right there. The ball goes all the way up to here and then comes down. I mean, that is an incredible shot. Watch this. Way up yep. off the glass. I don't think I've ever seen a shot go up that high. Terrence Woods making the basket in an impossible angle. Another two inches, I think, would have gone over the shot clock. Three ties, six lead changes in this one so far. And it's the Gamecocks right now by one. Look, that's a horse shot, you call it. You're oh, yeah, dead. absolutely. You, you can't you got make no that. shot at it. Antonio Grant's in his last two. He decided to give up a three. Good screen by Ross underneath. They're trying to get it to Howell. Grant had an opening again and gave it up. Eight on the shot clock. Bradley. Oh, lost the handle going up, but he got a follow from Howell. You got to be able to block out the guys that can rebound. Nobody there to get Howell, and he simply just very easily floated up there on the miss by Bradley. First time Carolina's led by as many as three. Yabro found a crease. That's all he needs. That's a little hesitation right there at the top of the circle and another gear going down the lane. Yeah, he's got a quick step. They run Bradley around a pick. Now wants it down low against Hayslip and gets it. Backs in and drew a foul. Nice job by the big freshman.
has his numbers. Under 20 minutes a game. We said last week had a huge game, and I kind of think he likes ESPN and Super Tuesday because he's got six already. Six and a half to play. First half. Tony Harris been pretty quiet. One three-pointer. And Tennessee turns it over. Harris tried to feed it off to Yarborough on the wing, and he just lost the ball right into the South Carolina bench. These are the kind of things that have also killed Tennessee. Uh, on top of their defensive lapses, and as you said, they know how to score, but you can't have eight turnovers, only one against the opposition. But you know what it is? It's a little inattention to details. Yeah, they just don't seem to stay focused at times. Because when they're on and all gears are hitting, they're pretty scary. Kitchens triple team had it blocked by Hathaway. Nice job defensively by Big Charles. One of four Tennessee volunteers that rank in the top ten in the Southeastern Conference and block shots. Slay got it to Yabro on the back door, but he missed the jumper. And here comes South Carolina. developed into a half-court game. Yes, very, little, very little transition on either club. I don't know if we've had any fast-break points, have we? Nothing I can remember. Foul on the outside. <laughs> Tony Harris picks up his first. Only the 16 foul. We've only had a total of nine fouls so far in this game. <laughs> Travis just checks back in. So does Bradley, Lucas, and Howell go out. I think Jerry's just trying to focus himself there. I don't think it was a headache. Although this team has given him a few this year. And Travis is wide open underneath. And Boynton didn't get into the ball. And Grant got around Hathaway and got bumped. Hathaway picks up his second. Grant had the quickness factor going there as he made the catch and made a move to the hoop. And Charles gave him a little hip check on the way by. You know, when you're familiar with working around the basket and not coming out on the floor to guard people, it makes it very tough. Hathaway, anytime time he gets beyond eight feet from the basket, he's in unfamiliar territory. Yeah. Antonio Grant just threw up a air ball on a free throw. I think that's the first time I've seen that this year. Yeah. He doesn't want to see it again either. <laughs> I guarantee you that. He's got his mom here and all kinds of family for senior night, and he's had a good game so far until that one. Yabro inside, Hathaway trying to muscle the Travis's. Here's Slay. Nice help on the Travis's that time. The pitches went down. Yabro again, that quick move, and got himself open on the baseline. Missed the shot. Grant and Bradley will try to run. Antonio behind oh, back and got it. That makes up for the missed free throw. How about that move? Tony Harris caught off guard. Ryan Stan. Oh, there's a big shot. That's Three the way to answer it. Nice job coming off of the bench right there. Rich Staff needed one. Helped this club. Two point game. Things calm down again a little bit as Bradley will bring it up. Here we go. Grant. Here we go. Travis quick move, but he ran into Hathaway. Point little push pass. Kitchens tried to hook it around at Petrovich, and he threw it away. It's only the second South Carolina tournament. Not much passing room down in that area. Slay's pretty good down there. All right, got double team. And he got his headband pulled down over his eyes. Antonio Grant's going to be called for the foul. That's one way to guard a guy. Just yeah. pull the headband down over his eyes. Absolutely. He can't see. It's a built-in blindfold. Grant Staff did his job. He came off the bench, played one minute, nailed the three. So the inbound will come on the baseline as we're still not over the limit. That was only the fourth team foul in South Carolina. Game pops in a 2-3 zone. This is what they do coming out of an out-of-bounds play. Yabro again. Man, that 
move. He's got some shape. He's got eight. And we're tied again. It's a pretty floater, isn't it? Yep. It's his best move. And it's been Tennessee's best offense tonight so far. Double team on Petronas. That leaves Ross open. He's going to take the three. Isaiah Victor will clear the glass, and Tennessee can lead if they score. 320 on the first half. Andre Patillo blows a whistle on the baseline. Al picks up his second. All right, go back and take a look at Ron Slade right here. When you got a guy who's got an open hand and he's calling for the basketball, that means he's ready to receive it. Rolando Howell came from the backside and fouled him. Tie game, 21 apiece on senior night. Antonio Grant doing his thing. Senior night, I think it's uh, sign night as well here at Frank McGuire Arena. Certainly t-shirt night, yeah. Carolina and Tennessee tied at 21. Neither team exactly lighting it up, especially South Carolina, 9 out of 24, and they haven't hit a three-pointer yet. But they've done a nice job on the boards and gotten some second chances, and Tennessee's had eight turnovers. Game caught right there, 0 of 6, and, of course, the eight turnovers right there is what's killing Tennessee. Yabro, the leading scorer in the ball game with eight. Antonio Grant's got six for South Carolina to lead the Gamecocks in score. Yarbrough coming off a perfect game of 7-for-7 seven seven from the floor, 6-for-6 six six from the free throw line against Vanderbilt over the weekend. And he sort of picked up where he left off here tonight. He's had some nice moves, especially those little running floaters to about 10 feet in the paint. Victor on the baseline, and he used glass, I believe. Good ball reversal by Tennessee that time. They got the ball in the hands of Victor right on the baseline, and an easy one, and Tennessee comes right back with pressure. That did not look like a shot to get going off the glass either. There. Ross around a pick on top. Kitchens did some nice things early, getting Slay at least to concentrate about getting in foul trouble. And now Kitchens finds himself with a tough catch down low, and he drew a foul from Isaiah Victor. Big foul, pretty active down there tonight offensively. It's kind of interesting to watch Petrovic and Kitchens operating inside like that. They're passing the ball to each other, and the passes aren't more than six feet apart right. from each other. There's a lot of defenders floating down there. If you get a good ball fake, you got the guys in the air, you can find the other guy wide open. That time, Petrovich just found Kitchens. Yeah. Let's go back and take a look at what I'm talking about. Look at this maneuver right here. See, Petrovich just makes a nice move across there. The help comes, and then there's the ball fake getting Victor up in the air. That pass by Petrovich just might have been too good. Tony had a tough time catching it, or he maybe would have had an easy deuce, but he had to catch it twice, and now has to go to the free throw line to try to earn him, and he got one of two. Three points for Tony. It's Tennessee by one. We got two and a half left first half. From Columbia, South Carolina. Over again, Michigan State, Wisconsin follows up to the Big Ten. Nice pass inside, and Petrovic has blocked it on Victor from behind somehow. And I mean, he blocked it with some authority. He got there in a hurry, too. I've never seen a guy block the ball across the basket on the other side. It was a great looking pass by Tony Harris, too. I thought it was going to be an easy deuce down low. Bradley on a fadeaway. Yabro will clear it off the backside with two minutes left in the half. Tennessee by one. Yabro. There it is again. Same maneuver, same result. Chance for a three point play. Brad, you're right. He does that about as well as anybody in college basketball. Getting the ball, getting into the lane, six feet, eight feet out, floating through that lane area, and not having a defender anywhere around to stop him. Boy, he is really tough on that move. First of all, you've got to be able to have a pretty good handle on the ball. He's an excellent ball handler for his size. Then you have to be able to do that, and that's hang a little bit. And he drew the foul and a chance for a three-point play. So if they ask him, what are you doing? Just hanging. <laughs> Just hanging. He's hung for 10 points and three rebounds. And he's got Antonio Grant seated because Eddie Fogler doesn't want Antonio to pick up a cheap third foul here in the last minute, 49 and a half. So 11-point first half for Yarbrough. 
And the lead goes out to four for Tennessee. That's the biggest edge they've had. Things have quieted in the Frank McGuire Arena as Carolina had a five-point lead of their own at 21 to 16, but it's been all Tennessee since. A 10-1 run. Travis just in the paint against Victor, a double team. Still got a decent shot away. Kitchen, second chance, third chance. Hathaway, no more chances. I'll tell you what, he gets in, it's a vice. <laughs> you can't get it out there. Tony Harris has a notion out there. Got a pick. And threw it away, trying to get it to Higgins. So another Tennessee turnover, their ninth. Coming up at halftime, less than a minute away. Courtyard by Marriott halftime report. Bill Pito's along. Bill will have Sports Center in game to take a look at Pittsburgh and Syracuse in the Big East. Frank Thomas speaks out. And no doubt that means he wants 20 million a year instead of that lousy 10 million they're giving him. <laughs> Bill will have all that for you at halftime. <laughs> Inside move by Kitchings and Hathaway is upset with himself because he just picked up his third foul. And Tennessee didn't need that. Now Hazlip's got to come back in the game for him. Go back and take a look at the inside. Bradley, nice pass to Kitchings inside. Now he wants to wheel with that left arm. You know, he's left-handed, so when he goes into that lane, that's the perfect spot to double-team him. Hathaway felt like he might have gotten more ball than arm. Charles probably had that one coming after the slap on Tony's head earlier. <laughs> That's three, and they'll get him out of there after this first free throw. There comes the big guy, and Hayslip comes in. It really gives Tennessee a little bit different look, a little bit quicker. Hathaway not very quick out there, and Hayslip is very quick up and down the floor and on these inside moves. Tony Kitchings, only one field goal, but he's done a nice job with the rebounds tonight. And he got both free throws. So that cuts the lead to just two. With Tennessee playing for the final shot if they choose. Well, maybe they won't. Yabro, the victor for an easy slam. It's there, take it. Don't wait 30 seconds for it. Go ahead and put it in. Nice job by Yarbrough of getting the ball inside. That looked like transition. It basically came off a press that didn't work. First easy basket we've had tonight. Got to hurry now. Lucas, a lot of dribbling, but he did get an open shot. He almost airballed it. And Tennessee touched it last. South Carolina thought it went out of bounds, and now Lucas limps up. Maybe that foot is bothering him a little bit, or maybe his feelings are hurt after that poor jump shot. I'm not sure which. And now we're going to time out. They're going to try to come up with an inbound play here with 2.9 remaining in the half. Brad, you're right. I'm watching Aaron Lucas go back to the huddle, and he is limping. In fact, uh, I think he's trying to tell Eddie Fogel to get somebody else in there for me. Another look at the pass from Yabro to Victor for the easy one. Nicely done inside. I mean, he made Victor easy, easily uh, accessible and a good pass down inside. Nothing's, guys are good. nothing's come easy for either one of these teams tonight, and I think you're right. Tennessee's picked up the intensity defensively a lot more than we've seen in the last couple weeks from them. Well, but South Carolina, too, hasn't been able to shoot the basketball all year long. They've right. always, they have ranked last in the Southeastern Conference in shooting almost this entire year. They're still struggling with their shooting and their three-point shoot. Lucas is heading to the locker room for an extra three seconds. They'll take a look at that foot. And we'll take a look at the inbounds play and see what they come up with. Boynton is the guy that will inbound. On the baseline, he found Bradley for three. He got it! That's why you call a timeout with 2.9 seconds left. Jamel Bradley knocks down a three and cuts the lead down to a single point. Picture perfect, Larry. Watch the ball get into the corner. You draw up the out-of-bounds play. You get it the way you want it. Nobody for Tennessee over there. The closest player from Tennessee is on the bench. Nicely done. Bradley sticks it in the bottom of the net. Carolina only one field goal in the last four minutes, 54 seconds. Couldn't have been a bigger one at a better time, though. They trail by one.
I don't know if this has been a game to crow about or not. I'm not really sure, but the Gamecocks are uh, only down by one. We just <laughs> lost the chicken behind us. Brad Nestle and Larry Conley back at Frank McGuire Arena. If ever there was a game, and you said it earlier, that you could say the excellence of execution and still only have 55 points, it's this one. We had a lot of great passing, some pretty good defense, not a lot of points. Well, we have a term for this. We call it a grinder, and that's what both <laughs> of these clubs are doing right now, are grinding out. May I interest you in a couple of highlights? Sure. Let's Absolutely. go see. We'll take a look at what they've got. Of course, uh, when you talk about South Carolina on the inside, you talk about Tony Kitchens with a nice move right here with the left hand. This was early on a very difficult shot. And of course, Kitchens coming back with a good defensive play, slapping it to Ross. Yarborough was the big man in the first half. He had 10 points. Nice move there going down the lane. Watch this pass right here from Yarborough to Victor. Well done. Good first half for Vincent Yarborough. 11 points. That was his only assist, and he had three rebounds to go with those 11 points. Tennessee actually warmed up to 52 percent, as you can see. South Carolina really struggling from the floor, but they hung in there pretty well in the rebounds and the second chance points. And then the big shot right before the first half horn sounded as Jamel Bradley hit the three-pointer, the only three-pointer of the first half for South Carolina, and cut it down to a one-point game. That's where we are as we head into the second stanza. There's been the man of the night so far, Yarbrough. And we're underway, second half from South Columbia. South Carolina is going to open up man to man, and he that's almost lost the ball out of bounds. That would not be a very good start for the Volunteers. Slade's going to take a baseline jumper. Antonio Grant will clear it. Good word. pass, and he lost it. We get word now from the South Carolina bench that Aaron Lucas is out for the rest of the game. So that foot. That really wasn't giving him too many problems until late in the first half, obviously is now. And he's out. So that's going to put more pressure on Michael Boynton, for one. Boynton played pretty well against Georgia the other day when Lucas went down. Higgins for three. Got it. You know what? I agree with you. You said this in the first half. Why doesn't Higgins shoot more? I, don't have any I mean, idea. this guy can really scald the nets. He just doesn't get enough looks at the basket. Both his field goals are three pointers. He's given his team a four point lead. Antonio Grant, and it's swatted out of there by Yarbrough. He used that behind the back move in the first half and scored off the glass, and this time Yarbrough knew where he was heading. Hazel Pathway, Yarborough, and Victor, all four in the top ten in the Southeastern Conference and blocked shots. There's Yarborough coming up with another one. That's his 35th of the year. 35 block shots and 34 three-pointers. I always look at that and say that's a pretty versatile player. And you can have as many threes as you have block shots. Kitchings thinking Slay was maybe going to get a hand on that. And a shot put him one up there and missed it. Yarbrough on the other end rattled out a jumper. Early pace here is quickened in the opening minute of the second half. Kitchings spins inside. Yarbrough just picked his pocket. It's like a spinning top in there, and he spun right into Yarbrough. Slay gets it on the low block with a hook shot. And out of bounds to the game cut. Now, Brad, that's two possessions in a row. The Tennessee has had a pretty good look at the basket. Yarborough with one. That time, Slay underneath with a nice spin move, but they couldn't finish anything. So we take a look at Aaron Lucas on the bench. Apparently, his night is done. And he's their floor leader, the junior out of right here in Columbia. I don't believe he scored, did he? Nope. Didn't have a point. Bradley with a nice look inside. And he lost it again. Gets it for the second time. Gives it up. Three quick turnovers, more than they had the entire first half here in the opening two minutes for South Carolina. Petrovic is again all alone for the rebound on the slay miss. Tennessee really shot the ball very well in the first half, over 50%, but they've started out a little cold here in the second half. Petrovic is against Victor in the paint. And he missed in close. Gamecocks can't buy one so far. Slay once again against Kitchens inside. Look at Yarbrough, and he almost lost it and got fouled. And Antonio Grant's going to be the guilty party, and that's three. Carolina Grant. You know, a pretty good move by Eddie Fogler right here. Kitchens is struggling a little bit in that post area down there. He turned it over a couple of times. 
maybe he wanted to pass a message on, look, there are a couple of things you got to do when you get surrounded down there. Somebody's got to be open. Get the ball out of there. And he didn't do it with a big smile on his face either when he sat out there. Tennessee only one field goal this half so far. Now they've got two, and it's the same guy. John Higgins, another three. And now this one is in danger of kind of getting away from South Carolina. But an un unable to score in the second half, and they've seen Higgins knock down two triples. Combine that with the fact that Aaron Lucas is now on the bench with an injury. Oh, that's a big answer for Jamel Bradley. A big shot. Bradley's second three-pointer. The first one was to end the first half. The Travis just trying to hang in there with Victor is going to be the guy that picks up the foul. Got it off on the push. Victor had it on an easy turn down inside, and Petrovic just pushed him with both hands. In Lithuania, you can get away with it. That's right. This is Columbia. <laughs> Not the country, the city. <laughs> Victor. I think he walked with it, he did. And Rip Attila made the call. And you can't get away with that in either country. <laughs> That's traveling no matter what airport you're in. That's 10 turnovers on Tennessee. Ross weaving through some traffic. Only two field goals for South Carolina in the last eight minutes if you take it back to the end of the first half. Petrovic is tough offensive board. Drew a foul from Victor or Slay, one of the two. They were both there. It's Victor. I don't think Petrovic can go up with a basketball and shoot it without at least getting hammered a little bit. Every time Eddie Fogler's center gets the ball, it seems like he's in position to put an offensive stick back. Somebody clobbers him. I say Victor picked up that foul against Petrovic. Rips it. He's got six points. Hathaway is going to check back in, and Victor will come out for Tennessee. As Larry said, Petrovic just had a nice game in the win over Georgia over the weekend in Athens. 17 points, 10 rebounds. Guy only playing his fourth year of organized uh, basketball. Interesting story. He speaks four languages: Lithuanian, which is his home country, obviously; German, English, and Russian. And he can write all those languages as well. Travis just inside. Whoa. Whoa, what a block by Yarborough. That is a fourth block shot tonight by Yarborough. And Tony Harris now looking. We got guards dropping like flies in this game. Look at this one. Well, this is some block right here, but Travis just goes up and good help from the offside. That one went out a lot faster than it did coming in. Boy, that's beautiful. That's a terrific defensive play. Vincent Yarborough. Talked about his offensive abilities, but defensively he's awfully good too, as you just saw. This forced Ross to throw it off Yarbrough on front of the South Carolina bench. He couldn't get enough room trying to move his own teammates over there. Tennessee, we said, leading this conference with block shots. They're working on a right foot and ankle of Tony Harris. And South Carolina with the inbound play it wasn't a piece of art, but they did get it in. Bradley, nice kick out to Ross for three. Rattled out. Here comes Harris Walker to Slay behind the back. Good looking play. They didn't get it finished. Pretty nice play. Boynton with a defensive play to slap it away down underneath. Otherwise, Tennessee would have had a layup. 15-51 remaining in the ball game. Tennessee in front. They almost got an easy two here. But Carolina got back on defense. Tony Harris, they're working on that ankle, retaping during the break. We'll see if he's back. Still doesn't have his shoe back on. So Walker takes his spot at the point. Sometimes ankle sprains are just so difficult to heal. It takes them a long time. And Walker in there for Tony Harris, drops it to the free throw line. If he continues to do that, they're not going to miss Harris very much. No. And the lead 
goes to five. Howell saved it. Barely. Barely. <laughs> if he wasn't 6'9", that's a backcourt violation. Ten on the shot clock. Carolina sort of standing around right now. Bradley trying to find something, and all he found was a turnover. Yeah, it was a good defensive effort that time by Tennessee. They really turned South Carolina inside out. They were trying to go in there, and they couldn't get the ball down in the paint area. Jerry Green should be very pleased with that possession by South Carolina because his defense looked awfully good. South Carolina had only two turnovers in the first half, and now they've got six. Whoa, Walker. What did Larry just say? They won't miss Tony Harris if he hits offensively, just drops in a three. All of a sudden, the lead's the biggest of the night. I really like these pack backup point guards for Tennessee, and I'm talking about Harris Walker and Terrence Woods. Ross has an answer. The senior playing his final game at home drops in a triple. And a turnover. South Carolina trying to battle their way back in. And a foul, and then a little bump. Al and Yarbrough bump after the foul. Picks up the foul. Timmy Egan said he pushed from behind just as Howell was going up for the layup. Watch it again. Pretty nice move right here. Boynton with a nice bounce pass. Well, I thought Yarbrough might have gotten a lot of ball on that, too. Certainly wasn't any body contact. Ooh, a little shove. That's a little extracurricular was, activity. That's the one I was talking about that Howell got away with. 6.6 .6 rebound night for Orlando. Tim Higgins and Vincent Yabro talking about that right now. And Tim says, you know what? I see almost all of them. I didn't see that one. <laughs> Tim is saying, I'll keep an eye on it the next time. That's right. <laughs> I got them both. Eight points for the freshman. And the lead sliced down to three. And the fans starting to get into it again. trips down court. Is he quick? I'm telling you, he gets into that defense so quickly. He's hit three shots in a row. Grant looking to pack it to the post to Kitchens and just can't get it there. Hathaway doing a nice job defensively as is Yabro on top. Bradley has an opening. Too strong. Yabro, three on two, Tennessee. Walker, the push pass to Slay. And Slay had it stripped down there by Boynt. Tennessee may have let one get away right there. They had a chance, and South Carolina came back and uh, kind of recovered themselves on defense. Oh, Yarbrough grabbed that pass. That wasn't a good pass. Excellent defensive play. Thirteen minutes left in the ball game. Slay tried a three. Higgins keeps it alive. And a whistle and a foul on Big Charles. That's going to be four. They're going to say Hathaway grabbed him with the off arm. He was trying to call for the ball with one hand, and he was holding with the other. Charles has to sit with four personal. Holding with the right arm, calling with the left. And Rolando Howe obviously agrees, concurs with that call. Lucas out of there, they kind of go by point guard by committee. Nice. Back door cut by Bradley, a great pass by Boyd. Nicely done. Two guards with good communication that time. That was your point guard by committee that you were talking about, and Boynton on a beautiful push bounce pass to Bradley. Three point game again. Victor in the paint. A little bit short. Boynton and Howell come out of there with it. Both 
starting point guards out of the lineup with foot and ankle problems. And here's the two backups going one on one. Kitching. Wants to back in, goes baseline and walk with it. Eddie Fogler trying to tell Andre Patillo who's still dribbling the ball. Sixth turnover of this half for Carolina. They trail by three. Forty-one thirty-eight Tennessee. Eleven forty-six remaining. Carolina cut it down to three with the back door cut here. A beauty, Larry. Yeah, watch this, Brad. Now you'll see, you're going to see right here the move up. Now what happens now is he's he reverse. You'll see the pass come down inside. But the defensive maneuver right here is to pull the guy up and then go the other way. Watch how far Bradley is down court before that ball actually goes through the hoop. <laughs> Look at Aaron Lucas <laughs> in the background back there uh, applauding. Nicely done. That was a nice pass inside by Michael Boynton and a nice move also to get open by Bradley. Jamel's got 10 points tonight. Two big three-pointers, one to end the first half, one early in the second half when it looked like Tennessee was going to maybe open something up. Tony Harris has been retaped, relaced, and he's coming back in. Meanwhile, Aaron Lucas on the other side, the starting point guard, has his shoe off, and he's not coming back in. You know he'd love to be out there right now. This game's a podiatrist dream, Larry. 11:35 <laughs> left in this SEC Super Tuesday matchup. Both teams six and eight in conference play. They're going to improve their standing heading to the SEC tournament in Nashville. Higgins got another offensive rebound. Somehow another, another, he finds a way to get to the ball. He really does. Victor, tough catch, and even better shot. Well, the second time in a row, Victor went inside. That time, he got Hal to commit the foul and get the basket. Tennessee is still shooting over 50% for the game. Watch it again. Nice dump down inside, and Victor makes the turn, and Hal just bumps him as he goes up for the shot. Third foul on Rolando right there. And a chance for a three-point play for Isaiah Victor. Rim down and Kitchings will clear it. Let's see if South Carolina tries to get Rolando Howell involved offensively. He had a streak in the first half, but he's been pretty quiet since. And we're saying a foul on huh? yeah, Higgins. Yeah, Higgins is going to pick one up. Bradley was trying to get around that screen, and he couldn't. The reason was he's being held. Brad, you take a look at those uh, hearing aids right there Jamel Bradley had on uh, the, the quick shot we had right there. This is a great story of this young man. Uh, he had a childhood accident where he lost 80% of his hearing. And they fitted him with some new hearing aids here, which allows him to hear much better now. And shoot better. Nothing wrong with his sight. It is a heck of a story. He's a engaging young fella, nice kid, and a great three-point shooter. That last one couldn't have come at a better time. That's the lead down to two. He's also been a big inspiration to a lot of deaf kids in the state. He yes, spends he a is. lot of time talking to those kids. South Carolina can tie if they score. It'll be Jamel Bradley. And the rebound still loose. Tennessee comes up with it. sure about that shot right there. He's going to get the foul, but uh, there was really nowhere for him to go. Jamel Bradley. Bradley picks up the foul. Watch Tony Harris right here. Trying to weave his way through traffic. Once he gets down inside, he really has nowhere to go. Fortunate to draw the foul. Antonio go to the free throw line, 77% on the year. McGuire Arena on senior night. Final home game for the Gamecocks. Both these clubs six and eight in conference play coming into this one. And Tennessee trying to cling in that top 25 ranking after plummeting from number four back in January all the way to number 23 now. And they're trying to win their second in a row after losing five straight. But they're having their hands full with South Carolina. Midway point of the second half. Don't forget Michigan State, Wisconsin to follow us 
from the Big Ten. And the foul's going to be on Hayslip away from the ball. Hayslip on a hold, and he's trying to argue with Andre Patillo that he's getting pushed off with the other arm. I'll tell you what, it's tough to lobby after the foul's been called. Three officials we have tonight are not great lobbyists anyway. <laughs> you might as well save your energy. Point. One hand pass to Kitchens leaves Antonio Grant wide open. And the rebound for Travis has got another offensive board. Harris scrambles out of there. Nice hustle on a bad wheel for Tony Harris to come up with a loose ball rebound. Victor, big mismatch in height with Bradley. Missed the fadeaway. Grant Hazelip didn't though. Travis just didn't do very well to try to keep him away from there. And Hazelip with an easy basket just kind of slid by him and got an easy basket off the backboard. Point. Now to Grant Lowe. Triple team. I'll tell you what, when the ball goes down low to, to South Carolina on the block down there, there are four guys down there with Tennessee Orange just waiting for a shot to go up. They all want to block one. In this case, it's Victor who fouls him, and he could have picked anybody, but 44 is the guy that got it. And Antonio Grant, the senior out of North Augusta, South Carolina. Hey, Red, sometimes being a shot blocker is a detriment, too. I, I, I kind of feel like when you got a guy that loves to go up and block shots, oftentimes you can give him ball fakes, get him in the air, right. because he wants to show that he can block that shot, and you'll get a lot of fouls out of it. Good point. Tony Grant missed them both. Got to hit the free throws when you're trying to get back in the game. They trail by five. Tennessee under nine minutes away from their 20th win of the season. That would be four years in a row for Tennessee if they were to do that, too. Hayslip drops in a triple. We just saw him work inside off the glass. The 6'10 sophomore takes it downtown, and it's an eight-point lead. And now South Carolina's got to find some offense pretty soon here. This has been the guy, Janelle Bradley. But Tennessee's well aware of that. They're not going to let him loose if they can help him. He'll try triple. Got it. Well, that didn't look very pretty, but it went in. Looked like a knuckleball floating up there. Michael Boynton. Keep the game manageable. Nice baseline nice. move by Victor. Oh, was that nice. Victor just schooled Petrovic's in whatever language you want. <laughs> Lead is seven for Tennessee. Wow. Again, a double team on the baseline. He's a little too strong, but Petrovicius has been camping out on that low block. He's looking for a foul and didn't get it. Fans are looking for one, two. Hazlip again for three. Got another one. He's feeling it. That's a guy 6'10 sticking threes. 10-point lead. Now the question is, can the Gamecocks find something to come back with? We'll have a timeout to talk about it. Seven minutes, nine seconds remaining in the ball game, and the Tennessee Volunteers have opened a 10-point lead.
Of course, oftentimes when you get into a huddle, you'd like to turn those off anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> what you're going to hear, you may not want to hear. I never hear my wife when she's talking from behind. I know that much. <laughs> I just let it go if it's not in front of me. 54-46. Carolina needs some defensive stops. Or Tennessee will win its 20th game of the year. Still a ball game, though. Eight-point game with less than seven to go. Harris trying to utilize the screen out here. Nobody coming out to help. He's looking, probably shouldn't have taken that one. He says he was fouled. Larry Conley's giving me the same sign. Yeah, I think he was. You don't shoot a ball four feet from eight feet. Kitchings lost it out of bounds. Good slap away that time. Good defensive work down the inside by Yarborough. And we've got a timeout with 6.34. Remaining in the ball game, 54-46. Pretty good idea here. I, I think Eddie Fulger uh, has made a little bit of a comeback, only down eight. Get your club together, get them organized, and make sure you get a basket out of this trip. Three that got it to within one at 
at the buzzer at halftime. Well, he's got him back in striking distance again. Tony Harris, too strong. Howell the rebound. I'm not sure if that's the shot they wanted. Tony saying he was hit on the elbow on the follow through, no call. Boynton's got seven assists off the bench in place of Lucas. Here he is around a pick. Kitchen's really hammering down there with Hazley. Inside, how? There's that passing again on the interior by Kitchen's inside the Rolando Howe. Tennessee right now is going, uh-oh. Nine straight points by the game box. Now you hear the volunteers, and there's another turnover. A travel, Harris dropped the pivot foot. I was getting ready to say to the volunteers, you've got to get your composure. You've let this lead slip away. South Carolina on the verge of taking the lead. The road is so tough in all conferences, and the SEC is included. And now South Carolina almost amazingly can lead if they score. Remember, they were down 10 with three and a half minutes to play last week to Arkansas and lost. They were down 10 a moment ago, and now with four minutes left, still very much have a chance to win. 10 on the shot clock. Point. Trying to leave it for somebody and threw it away to Higgins. Yabro, Sands, headband. Hayslip, three-pointer. You talk about, I don't know about shots. I'm not sure I want a 6'10 guy taking one from 25. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, it's Fat Tuesday. I'd give that shot up for Lent. <laughs> They're throwing the beads. We'll take a timeout. 327 left. <laughs>
all at home, and now they've got number 23, Tennessee, at home, 246 away from a miraculous come from behind win. There's still a lot of hoops left. Don't think the volunteers are out of this. They still have a chance to get back in there. They've got a very formidable offensive club. They've just got to be smarter with the ball than they have been the last three or four minutes. They took some ill-advised shots, and South Carolina put together a 13-0 run. This game was 54 to 44, with 7:09 remaining in the ball game. Now with 2:46 left, it is South Carolina by three. Brad, one of the things I hear from coaches all year long is shot selection, shot selection, shot selection. Make sure you get good shots. Last two Tennessee has taken have not been good. And now they're going to pick up the defense. Kitchings knocked it away. And a foul. Bob Donato's trying to get a whistle heard. I think it's going to be on Slay. I think Bradley had the step on him, and he reached up and pushed him just as Bradley was about to pick it up. That was an all-out sprint by both players trying to get to the ball. Watch it again. Pretty good defensive play. Bradley right here slapping it away, and it comes back up the other side. Looks like Kitchen's got a hand on it, too. And it's a shuttle run. And Slay got the hand on him. Jamel Bradley. As a senior in West Virginia, he hit 95% of his free throws. He doesn't miss many. Got great form. Four-point Carolina lead. Bradley looking for point number 23. What a turnaround. What a turnaround for South Carolina. They're two and a half away from a major come-from-behind win. We'll see if they get it when we come back. Tennessee hasn't scored in almost five minutes. Welcome back to Frank McGuire Arena, Brad Nessler and Larry Conley. We sat here last Super Tuesday and said, can you believe that South Carolina lost a 10-point lead in the last three and a half minutes? Can you believe what we've just seen the other way around? I know. And you know what? South Carolina's three-point shooting. They're the worst shooting three-point team in the Southeastern Conference. In the second half, they are six out of ten. They have stuck to three, and that is what has gotten them back in this game. And now the crowd with a chant of USC, USC. Not a packed house, but there'll be a lot more people tomorrow morning at the water cooler saying they were here than actually were if they win this game. Two three zone now being employed by South Carolina. Any forward with the side of the ground, the man to man. See what Tennessee does to handle it. Higgins packs inside a slay. There's the kick out. Yabro will try three. Short rebound how.
Lewandowski. Officials are going to have a committee meeting. 
Andre Patillo says Tennessee basketball. Tennessee has no timeouts. They have to continue playing. 5.5 left in the game. Maybe. Maybe more than 5.5. Maybe five minutes and 5.5 left. Who's going to be the trigger? Higgins is going to trigger. Boynton will call a timeout. South Carolina wants to set up a defense. Eddie Fogler's decided he uh, knows what he wants to do defensively, and he's going to tell his club right now, probably not a bad move. Even though Tennessee had no more timeouts. Have we had an SEC game in the last month, you and I, that hasn't come down to something like this? It's been great. We're living right. I know. <laughs> it's that clean living. Well, I don't know about that, but we're living. <laughs> <laughs> so the SEC with two six and eight clubs here and represented in the top 25 by Florida Ole Miss Kentucky Alabama and this Tennessee team and now will Tennessee win its 20th will they find a way to put a miracle up here in the last five seconds or will we go to overtime or will South Carolina pull one of the great seven minute comebacks of the season that's what we'll find out in the next five seconds and everybody in the arena except Larry and I on their feet gotta hurry they throw it away what an improbable play South Carolina called a timeout to set up a defense I don't know if that's what Eddie Fogler had planned but something worked this pass was just not catchable South Carolina did a nice job of shutting down the inside, so they had to go to the outside with it. Higgins lobs it up there. It's just an uncatchable pass. And Walker trying desperately to save it goes right over the Tennessee bench. And now Jerry Green is saying, I don't care who you foul, foul somebody and foul them fast. Brad, you know what you do now? You run a guy out. You sprint him to the other end and throw the ball long and just let him catch it. And even if Tennessee intercepts it, they don't have enough time to turn around and get a good, a good shot point. going the other way. That's a good point. Bradley might be that sprinter. He's got Higgins on him, but he looks like he's heading that way. Now he'll come back toward the ball. Grant's got to lob it. Petrovich is they foul him immediately, and this might be intentional. I don't know. Nope, it's not. So. And Tim Higgins is shaking his head. No. Marius Petrovic is two of three from the free throw line. Right. He's the guy that caught the inbounds play. He got run over. I think that's legitimate. He was going for the ball. Oops. They just keep leaving the door open. Watch Eddie Fogler react. He says, with palms uplifted to the heavens, are you sure? Well, Petrovich just came that look. <laughs> Petrovich just came in shooting 69% from the free throw line. Tonight, 50. This one would force a three-point shot by Tennessee to force overtime. If he misses it, they could actually win this thing. He got the second. Now Tennessee's got to go to a three. Tony Harris is not on the floor. Find your three-point shooters if you're South Carolina. Walker might be the guy to take it if he can get it across midcourt. Wait a minute. You know what? Foul. That's a good foul. It is they good had foul. five team fouls. That will be the sixth, and Tennessee will have to take it out again. They have to take it out of bounds. Good, smart coaching ploy right there by Eddie Fogler. Now he's telling his defense to pack it back in, then come out and guard. Do you foul again? I was thinking, why not foul again? Send him alive for one. Sure. I guess they always can hit one, try to miss, and tip it in. But do you give him the three-point shot? I don't. Guard beyond the line. Don't worry about inside. Pass into Woods at the buzzer for the tie. He got it! Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. What a shot. You don't give him the three. And Woods has sent it to overtime. Came off of the screen wide open.
Wow. Terrence Woods, 41st three-pointer of the year, is the biggest of the year. Watch the screen and watch how Woods comes off of it right there. He comes right off the screen, and just as he turns, looks, nobody there, nothing but net. That's about a 26-foot shot, too. Boy, that is a big basket for Tennessee. Think about this, not only for this game, but perhaps for the season. you got to be kidding me. Oh, well, that is gigantic. We're going overtime. Oh, boy. 63-63, we'll be back. How do you turn a wacky, strange game into something special? Try Terrence Woods. Here he comes again off of that screen. You can see Bradley chasing him right there. What's the reaction of that bench? That might be a season's worth of frustration right there, being unleashed. That was something. So now we're set to play five more. Bob Donato will toss it. And Tony Harris back in there will control it. Slay down low. He walks. Tennessee has been down this road before. In fact, all on the road. Two OTs, two OTs, and a regular overtime, and they've lost two of them. South Carolina's opening possession of the extra stanza. Bradley, the leading scorer. Powell down low against Victor. In the paint. Good move. Drew a foul. Victor's got four. Right, you know, I was noticing right there, Rolando Howell, when he turned to go into the lane, kind of looked over his shoulder a little bit and saw Slay moving on the baseline. Look at that. Now, watch him look over his shoulder. Now, you see Slay going the other way. Now, he turns and goes into the middle instead of turning and going into the double team. Smart move right there by Howell. And free throws would have won this game in regulation for South Carolina had they hit him. Last year, they were 11th in the conference in free throw shooting. They're better this year, but they're only 16 of 29 tonight. And make it 16 of 30. Can't miss free throws in tight games and ever expect to win. Slay working against Howe. Grant cuts off Higgins. tonight from out there. He's hit four threes. And we ask the magical question, why doesn't he shoot more? We've been asking it all year. Tennessee now 11 of 20 from three-point range. Go back and take a look again. I mean, this is way out there. I mean, that's, that's got to be at least eight feet beyond the three-point line. It's about as far back as Woods' was to send it to OT. Now, Kitchings at the free-throw line. South Carolina is killing themselves right now from the strike. There's a difference in the game. They'd be out of here with a W right now if they'd made their free throws down the stretch. You're right. There's the story. 10 of 23, sub 50 in the second half. And overtime. And they missed another one. Michigan State and Wisconsin following us in the Big Ten. Can only hope it'll be as good as this one's been for you. Super Tuesday. And push foul on Howell. And Howell's got four. Victor was trying to maneuver down inside. He couldn't go anywhere because Howell had an elbow on him. Watch this again. Now watch the defensive work of Howell right here. 55. See that left elbow? Fouls are going to become a factor too now. Victor's got four. Isaiah Victor misses the front of a free throw opportunity, and it remains a three-point Tennessee lead. 325 left in overtime.
Bradley leads it for Howell. Almost blocked with it. I thought he did. Bradley this time leaves it for Kitchens. Big Tony. Couldn't hit the free throws, but he hit those. One point game. Caught a high percentage shot. Yeah. Three to go in OT. Woo! <laughs> 
Tennessee by one with 21 left in overtime. By one, courtesy of some great offensive follows by Yarbrough. You bet, watch it right here. Now watch Ron Slay operate. When he turns to look at the basket, I want you to notice something right here. Look at this guy. That's Isaiah Victor out on the floor. What, what Yarbrough, I'm sorry. Now watch Yarbrough make his maneuver down inside, going down the lane and follow that up. Yarbrough with a terrific offensive rebound. He came all the way from outside to get that. Nobody's got a full time out each with a 30. Possession arrow is South Carolina's. The ball is South Carolina's. The lead is Tennessee's. And on the floor will be David Ross, Antonio Grant, Orlando Howell, Michael Boynton, and Jamel Bradley, who's the guy that I would want to see touch it somehow in this offensive set with 21 seconds left in OT. Michigan State and Wisconsin following us. And it'll be Ross to inbound. They run Bradley way into the backcourt. They wanted to get it to him. They get it to Grant instead. And he looks for Jamel. He might be the guy that tries to win the ball game, but he's got a great defender in John Higgins on it. Looking for a pick. Got a crossover dribble. Inside 10, inside the lane, blocked by Hathaway. Big Charles with a huge, huge block. They got a jump ball. If I they do, it's South ball. Carolina. It's South Carolina's ball. It is. You know, Brad, that's one of those situations. If you've got the ball down underneath, get it out of there. Don't hold it. It's a great block by Hathaway. I mean, a terrific block. We talked about Tennessee leading the Southeastern Conference in block shots. That one by Hathaway was the seventh of the night. It was the biggest of the night, but... With the held ball, we talked about the all-important possession arrow. Sometimes you forget about that, and Carolina with a chance to win. Then Higgins will come to the scorer's table. And I'm not quite sure what the conversation is. The one thing they should change that possession arrow now, they still got to go in South Carolina's way. I just noticed that. I think this has, has something to do with the substitution. Did anybody come in uh, during the timeout? Kitchings, I don't believe, was on the floor before Ross was. I think that might have been the difference. Uh, Tennessee, I'm not sure. We'll find out in a second. Nothing like adding to the drama. Not really sure what that was all about. Anyway, we got 6.3 seconds left. Now yeah, they're still discussing something. It's a substitution issue, is about all we know, and we would love to give you more details. We just don't have them. Michigan State, Wisconsin. Don't forget the Big Ten, a big game coming up. Maybe 6.3 seconds from now. Here we go. Six seconds left. Home team down by one. Pointing to inbound. The lob. Kitchings couldn't handle it. Still loose. Howe's got a shot at the buzzer. He missed it. And it's stolen by Boynton, but it's all over. And Tennessee survived in overtime. Tennessee survives South Carolina somehow. Great game, went to OT. They got a look, but it wasn't good enough. Not the one they wanted. They wanted Kitchings on an inbound play. He just couldn't handle it. That's going to wrap it up from Columbia. Final score, Tennessee 68, South Carolina 67.